and I'm, now I'm just reading directly, alpha has a positive analogical relationship. Let's stop there. What did we say a positive analogical relationship was? We said a positive analogical relationship is where A and B share properties. For example, in the example that I just gave not too many minutes ago, Robert quickly established dominance like a silverback gorilla. The positive analogical relationship in that sentence was the fact that both Robert and the gorilla established dominance. So, in the analogical basic form of A is like B, where A and B both share properties, they're said to have a positive analogical relationship. Here are the properties. Here are the properties, right, at the property level. Here are the groups. Now we say alpha has a positive analogical relationship with beta with respect to P1, right? Alpha and beta both share P1, right? Alpha and beta both share P1. So they have a positive analogical relationship with respect to P1. Okay, I'm not going to write that down. It's too much to write, but you get the idea, right? Let's go to number two. Alpha has a positive analogical relationship with, respect, uh, with beta with respect to P2. Alpha, alpha group, has a positive analogical relation with beta. These two share a property, positive analogical relation, with respect to P2. Right? So alpha and beta have a positive, you can consolidate one and two into one claim, right? You can say that alpha and beta have positive analogical relationships with respect to both P1 and P2. They both share properties P1 and P2. Hopefully that's clear. Negative analogical relationships. What did we say a negative analogical relationship was? A negative analogical relationship with respect to the basic structure A is like B assumes that or claims that, mandates that A and B do not share properties. The example that we gave in Robert uh, quickly established dominance like the silverback gorilla, the properties that they don't share, they're different species, they're different sizes, they have different levels of intelligence, and so on. Okay, so for number three, A has a negative analogical relationship with beta with respect to P3. A differs from beta because beta has P3 as a property and alpha does not have P3 as a property. Therefore, alpha has a negative analogical rela relationship with respect to beta, or you could say beta has a negative analogical relationship with respect to alpha, doesn't really matter, um, with respect to property pre P3, right? Beta has P3 as a property, alpha does not have P3 as a property, therefore, it's a perfect example to demonstrate that there is a negative relationship. So both alpha and beta, in their comparison, have positive analogical relationships and a negative analogical relationship, but we need to be precise. What relations do they share? P1, P2. Those are the positive analogical relationships. I hope I'm not going too fast. That should be clear. What's the negative analogical relationship? The fact that beta has property P3, but alpha does not have property P3. Okay, pretty simple. And again, you'll see why this game that I designed is important in in conceptualizing more, far more complex ideas and the way of sort of designing the game in this way serves a particular uh, cognitive function, I think. Um, but at this level, I just want you to visually, I think it's just a really good visual tool. You can easily see that, look, there's no P3 in, in alpha, right? That is a negative attribute, right? It's a negative and a logical relationship, so it should be simple. Okay. Um, so we did three. Now number four, alpha has a neutral analogical relationship with respect to delta, right? Um, with delta with respect to R, right? There is a neutral relationship between alpha and delta because we can't quite assess this relationship yet. We know that delta has relationships, has two random property generators, and we know that the random property generator can generate a P1. 
So if, conditionally, and this is what I love about this game, right? This game is just genius. Hopefully, people implement my game and give me a shout out because I just think this is just genius. If they don't implement it, I'll take all the credit because I designed it. But I think this would just be, I think this is just a phenomenal pedagogical tool, right? Um, um, with respect to the relationship, we need to establish positive analogical um, relations, which we've done, negative analogical relationships, which we've done, and now a neutral analogical relationship. How do we do that? We do that by instituting random randomness, right? And, you know, there's mathematical sort of statistical viability at this point. I'm not going to get into that. But the idea on a very sort of just keep it general level, insofar as we recognize that the random property generator can generate these functions, then we recognize that if it generates a P1, if it then generates a P1, then it has a positive relationship with alpha. If the random property generator generates a P2, if it generates a P2, so this return from R to P2, if it does that, it would also have a positive analogical relationship with respect to alpha. If, however, it generates a P3, if it generates a P3, there's no P3 in alpha, then it would have a negative analogical relationship with respect to alpha. That is, delta would have a negative analogical relationship with respect to alpha if it generates a P3. And then if it generates itself, it would maintain its neutral neutrality. So I think, I hope that that's clear. You know, if I went through, through that bit a little too quickly, um, just rewind it and, and watch it again to make sure that you understand this level. There's really nothing else I can say to explain it any clearer. I think that's as clear as I can make it. So if, I, if you're not comfortable with this level, because we're about to take it as, uh, another level deeper, deeper right? If you're not comfortable with this level, please stop it, rewind it, go through it again, make sure you get this level because we're gonna we're gonna go a step deeper. Now, now let's really implement our critical thinking skills, right? Let's really implement our critical thinking skills. So here are some critical thinking questions, right? Now that we understand the concept of analogical relations in heuristic modeling, I have an the heuristic modeling attempt was, that design was basically my version of a heuristic model. An explanatory model is all that means, right? That design that I just um, put up on the board, that game, it hasn't, I haven't, we haven't started playing the game yet, but that structure for the game is um, my version of a heuristic model. To, uh, we're starting to get a little bit more technical, but you shouldn't be complicated or confused because all that means is it's an explanation. An explanation of what? explanation at the group level, right, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, explanation at the group level of shared properties or not shared properties or neutral properties within groups and among groups. And those groups can, in theory, approximate infinity if you really want to get technical, right? Now, with respect to the questions that you can ask yourself, I've listed, and I, I, I didn't change the number, one, two, I need to change the numbers here. Um, hold on a second. Numbers. I've listed four questions, and before we get to a, a, even another level deep, I want to make sure that you can answer these questions properly and understand the answers to these questions, which will let me know and let you know that you really do understand what we're doing. Right. So if you can answer these pop questions properly, you really do understand what we're doing. If you want, I would encourage you to, at this point, pause the video, um, go through the questions, try and answer the questions one through four yourself, then unpause the video, see the answers that I put up, and just to check if your answers are the same as my answers. If they're not, then you need to sort of work through why you got the question wrong and, and move on before you move on. All right, so assume the following, right? I want you to assume that we're going to talk about adaptability. So for all the scientists in the world, this would be, this is, I'm not specifically, and this is my example entirely. Right? But I wanted to show you sort of an application within, within uh, the use of a heuristic model for, let's say, a field scientist, as just a generic sort of mundane example. We're going to talk about the idea of adaptability, the ability to adapt. A D A P T A B I L I. Right? And I'm taking creative license with this. I don't really know, nor do I really care what the real scientific definition of adaptability is for the purpose of 